right, so <clears throat> my case is a 64-year-old guy who presented with these very uh, sort of, uh, you know, nonspecific symptoms of fatigue, myalgias and flu-like symptoms. His symptoms continued to get worse, and then a, a, a doctor at home diagnosed, with, diagnosed him with PMR, put him on prednisone, and that made some of his symptoms better. But then in January, that, you know, that next month, he had sudden uh, vision loss in his left eye, and his MRI showed optic nerve enhancement. And, then, and you can see that the, there's, a, a, again, like in Ashley's case, there's a fairly long segment of optic nerve enhancement in his left eye that's visible on the axial and coronal scans. Uh, and you can see that it uh, even goes back, you know, right through the, just behind the optic canal, fairly significant enhancement. So he got three days of IV steroids, but he had no improvement in his vision. And then because of these other systemic symptoms that he had, they thought maybe he had giant cell arteritis and uh, his biopsy was positive. So he's continued on oral prednisone. And then uh, uh, because he didn't have any improvement in his vision, he was sent up to the Moran Eye Center. So his vision was very poor in his left eye. He had a pale nerve and he'd never had optic nerve swelling throughout his clinical course. And so my conclusion was that he had posterior ischemic optic neuropathy in association with giant cell arteritis. And I sent him to rheumatology and they were just gonna continue to follow his, uh, his course on prednisone. Uh, but then in August of that year, he was readmitted here because uh, he, he was still really feeling crappy. And then these, uh, they'd gotten another MRI scan. He had these new flare abnormalities in his brainstem that just didn't seem to make any sense with his, uh, uh, with his disease. And the rheumatologists thought, you know, there's just something atypical about this case. It's not acting like giant cell arteritis. He's really not, you know, he's pretty kind of on the young end of the spectrum. And so they had one of our pathologists get the slides from Idaho, where he's from, and review the slides. And they said, you know, this, this was misread. It was actually negative for giant cell arteritis. And so now nobody knew what the hell was wrong with him. At that point, um, because of some, of, the neuro, of a, some neurologic symptoms and these flare abnormalities in his brainstem, he was seen by Dana DeWitt in our Department of Neurology. And she thought maybe she had that he had neurologic manifestations of Sjogren's syndrome, and she had ENT do a salivary gland biopsy of his lip, and that was felt to be consistent with Sjogren's syndrome, and so they started treating him for Sjogren's syndrome, and he was put on Plaquenil and, and Imuran. And then after that, he didn't follow up uh, here any longer. He continued to see his doctors up in Boise, but just because of um, the trip between there and Salt Lake City, they continued to see their doctors up there. And that, like I hadn't heard from him until last month. Uh, th these are some of the, this is just a, a typical, a, uh, uh, some of the flare abnormalities that were noted in his, uh, in his ponds. So I kind of caught up with him uh, over by phone, talking to his doctors and to his wife last month. And uh, since that time, they've decided that he has multiple sclerosis. I can't really tell you based on what. Uh, they're, they were seeing a multiple sclerosis specialist in San Francisco, but despite all the treatment, the usual treatments for multiple sclerosis, he just got inexorably worse, and he's now paraplegic. Um, <clears throat> and then the reason they called me is that now he had vision loss in his right eye. That was Remember, that was his good eye. And uh, just at that point, uh, I'm not exactly sure why, they started him on rituximab, and they gave him more IV steroids. Um, he's been tested for neuromyelitis optica, and his serologic tests have always come back negative, at least twice. And so the question is, does this guy have neuromyelitis optica? Um, he has been, he, these serologic tests have been negative twice, but clinically, he has neuromyelitis optica. And the serologic test is, uh, I think, about 75, 80% sensitive, so it's definitely positive, possible to have this disease. Um, uh, without having the blood test uh, be, be positive. And I think clinically a guy with, you know, transverse myelitis, sequential optic neuritis probably does have NMO no matter what the blood tests say. But then he's also got this lip biopsy showing that he's got Sjogren's syndrome and, and these other weird uh, neurologic uh, and systemic symptoms. So I'm going to turn it